okay, this religion is weird. Why would God make his son, right? This is the idea. He would, he would pour himself into this human form and then offer himself up to these horrible people to whip him, to beat him, to put thorns on his head, let him carry this big cross and then kill him? What kind, what kind of God is that? Well, it's the strangest thing when you hear someone say it's a compassionate God. Well, how could a God be so compassionate and allow that to happen? How could he allow that to happen to his son? That's, that don't make any sense. And how can he allow, why is it compassionate and people are suffering? Yo, Elliot. Here's the thing with resisting the nine to five. Here's here's one of the tricky things with that. A lot of guys, and I've experienced this with a lot. You know, I've, I was talking about employees before. I've had I've had a lot of employees. I've had a lot of millennial employees. So I kind of get you guys. I'm kind of an old millennial in my main my thinking because I think just like you guys. I'm like I'm not. I don't want a job. But here's the thing: what what a lot of people uh, don't realize is that a non job is still a fucking job. Like you literally, and the only difference is instead of having one boss, you could have 10 bosses. Like your clients, like say you want to do client work, each one of those clients is a boss and every single one of them have a different personality and you're dealing with a different boss at different times. And sometimes you don't feel like dealing with those bosses, but they're the ones that pay you. You, it's, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. Even if you are like, for example, me, you know what? There's a bunch of shit I don't want to do. Like, and I actually enjoy, I love Thursdays. I actually look forward to this. But say, for example, there are times when I don't feel like answering emails. And I, my promise is to answer you guys' emails. Every Monday, I have to answer to my bosses, which are you guys. Every Monday, whether I want to or not, I sit down there and I could, I could spend five, six hours sometimes, depending on how many emails I got. And I'm just, I got to chug through those emails. I got a job and I got a bunch of bosses. You can't get away from it. There have been times when I used to scorn my position because I'm like, why can't I just have a regular nine to five job? <laughs> I used to say that. There's times I still think that. I'm like, why can't I just have one boss? I just punch the clock. I go and then I come home and it's done. So the grass is always greener, brother. <laughs> and you're always going to have to work. It's always going to be something. I was listening to this guy speak. Uh, actually, some of you guys might know him uh bull bulldog mindset on youtube uh uh john john S uh, sones anyway he was he was at the uh 21 convention he gave a talk about how like you gotta work everybody's gotta work and he was like telling a story about his friend who uh, not a friend but a guy that he met this guy was a famous uh pornography guy like he had sex with women for like a living. He made porn movies. Like that's what he did. And he was like, you know, one of the top guys, you know, good looking guy, probably had a huge slong and he gets to pipe women all day long. That's his, that's his job. And so John asked him, he's like, hey man, do you ever wake up in the morning and you know, you got a job to do. You got to go pipe some hot chick for, for the video. And you just don't feel like going. And the guy was like, Oh man, all the times. You think I want to do this every day? There are times where I just do not want to do it. The guy gets to pipe chicks for a living and he doesn't want to do it because he's got a job. So it just comes with the territory. And it's just one of these things that once you get it into your head that, bro, you this is the scourge of being a man. You're going to have to work. It does not matter. So once you get into your head that you're going to work, you're going to work. Uh, you just got to figure out what's most tolerable, not what's great, what's amazing. Anybody who tells you that they get up every day and it's amazing is bullshitting you and they're trying to sell you something. Uh, but if you can get up every day and you do something that you can tolerate, you're, you're, doing, you're a step ahead. <laughs> so I just want to share that one with you. You gotta be able to tolerate it. To move forward. I've got like another small notion. Mm -hmm. I've been battling with the idea of God. So in about probably about 2019, I was watching this um, religious movie with my auntie, and uh, I'm a Sikh. And um, this movie, Our God, he stops like a like a 
boulder, you know, with, with his hands like, you know, and it's going to come crashing and he just does some like all the amazing things. I don't know why, Elliot, since that day, I've just been so 50-50 on God. Not that I don't believe it or I believe it not two years still on. I don't even know what I believe. It's crazy. That's okay. And it's a good place to be. In fact, wrestling with God is how you make you make uh, you make advances on your spiritual journey. If there's no wrestle with God, <clears throat> there's no spiritual journey and you make no advances at all. I've wrestled with God my whole life as well. I've been from religion to religion and like I thought of God this way and I thought of God that way. And I wrestled so much just to be completely honest with where I am. I've wrestled so much that finally I was like, <sighs> you win and i just went right back to where i started <laughs> i was like well you win i'm catholic i was born catholic that's it and guess what the minute i stopped wrestling with god he started pouring all kinds of wisdom into me all kinds of show me a treasure trove a wide world that's available to me that wasn't available to me before i am so in love right now i'm in love with God and I'm in love with Catholicism. I love it, but it's not because I was. It's not because I won the battle. <laughs> it's because I lost the battle. I kept battling, and I failed so much that I let go. And then I was like, "Okay, this is where you're at. So keep fighting. Keep keep struggling." Um, Freddie says he has the same experience, but he finds himself lukewarm with God. Lukewarm is a tough place to be lukewarm is where you don't want to be lukewarm is where the world wants you to be the world wants you to be lukewarm meaning eh, that's how they get us all to be atheists and when you have when you're an atheist you have no faith and when you have no faith there's no hope and when there's no hope there's no meaning and when there's no meaning just kill yourself but if you're questioning and you're curious and you're searching and you're seeking and you're wrestling and you're trying to figure it out, you're, you're still hot. You might not have the answer. You might not be sure, but you're still hot. And it's a, and it's a, it's a, it's a fight worth fighting for. Keep going. But then why is it people who do believe in God still have issues in their life, whether it's addictions or, so, you know, I can only speak for now. I, here's what I've come across. Here's what I, here's where I've went and where I've settled and why I've settled where I've settled. Jesus does not promise you a good life. <laughs> that's 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 the greatest thing I ever heard. Jesus promises you nothing but suffering and sacrifice, but shows you that there is sanctification, there's blessings in the suffering. I know because I've been all around the block, Buddha, with, with, you know, they, a lot of the other religions, they promise you something great, a nirvana, or they promise you enlightenment, or they promise you, you know, a lot of the new age stuff, most new age stuff promises you uh, occult knowledge, it, it, uh, awakening it promises you all these beautiful things your life is gonna your life is gonna be light it's gonna be love it's gonna be great D definitely catholicism a lot of christian is not like that but definitely catholicism is no and it, it, as soon as you become a catholic especially like the chinese because the chinese have struggled so long for religious uh freedom that they, they practice this faith hardcore, they recognize, and because there's so much persecution because they're in a communist country, that when you make Jesus your Lord, when you make Jesus your savior, you are gonna suffer, but it's a delightful suffer. And so one of the beautiful things, I love this, that when suffering comes upon you, you can offer it up as penance, which is a purification for past sins. Jesus is the only is the only God that's 
if you ever notice, like Indian gods and like you know, uh, just various other gods, they got beautiful statues. Like here they are, looking nice, and you know, here I am, went with my thing. Um, Jesus is <laughs> Jesus is dead. Jesus is suffering. He's the suffering Messiah. And the reason why he suffered, you might say yourself, like, why would God? Okay, this religion is weird. Why would God make his son? Right. This is the idea. He would he would pour himself into this human form and then offer himself up to these horrible people to whip him, to beat him, to put thorns on his head, let him carry this big cross and then kill him. What kind, what kind of God is that? Well, it's the strangest thing when you hear someone say it's a compassionate God. Well, how could a God be so compassionate and allow that to happen? How could he allow that to happen to his son? That's, that don't make any sense. And how can he allow, why is it compassionate and people are suffering? Well, because God is perfect in all things. That means he, he can't suffer. God can't suffer because he's perfect in all things. If, he, if, if God is truly perfect it, and it's, uh, it lacks nothing, right? Like, for example, if you're hungry, that means you lack something. So you suffer because you're hungry. God can't be hungry. But in order to have compassion for humanity who was in its fallen state, God humbled himself and put himself in a human state. And then because he can offer grace to us in every other way, except he couldn't offer us grace through suffering because he doesn't know how to suffer. He's never suffered. He allowed himself to suffer so that he could say once and for all, look, humans, it's OK. I can suffer, too, and I'm going to suffer with you. And there's great grace in these sufferings. I like that. <laughs> I like that because there's no, just like I said before, there's no getting away from fight from work. There's no getting away from work. Anybody who try to make you think that you can get away from work is the same kind of people going to try to teach you, hey, there's, if you accept this God, your life is going to be perfect. That I've discovered all that is lies. You're going to work for the rest of your life and you're going to suffer for the rest of your life. And you're going to sacrifice for the rest of your life. Might as well live by a code where those things are greatly honored. Awesome. That's going to be a really good insight to reflect on. I, I get that, yeah. Well, every, some religions or, yeah, some gods are like, everything's be perfect if you believe in me. And then you believe in them and then everything goes crap. And you're like, what the hell? We're just done. Yeah. All the other guys, it was like, the strongest God, here's the big God, this guy got muscles, this guy got magic. My God suffers. My God suffers. And that's why I can relate. I can relate to my God because I'm like, yeah, I'm not a Superman. I suffer. And my God suffers along with me. That's how I know my God loves me. <laughs>